Programming on 90.7 WKGC and the Commodore Sports Network is sponsored by Sweet Bay. Sweet Bay is a bayfront village in Panama City that features parks, walking trails to the water, a future town center, and more. A community connected at the water's edge, Sweet Bay. More information about Sweet Bay online at SweetBayFL.com or 844-35-SWEET. This is Coach's Corner. Welcome, Commodore fans, to Coach's Corner, a production of Gulf Coast State College and the digital media program here. I want to thank the folks at Sweet Bay for sponsoring Coach's Corner. So today, Coach Phil Gaffney and I will talk about the Commodores. Um, open panel conference played us last week, played two panel conference games. Commodores right now 4-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in a panel conference, ranked number two in the state coaches poll. And last week's poll ranked ninth in the NJCA national poll. That poll will update it sometime later today. So, Coach, um, those two games were at home. Um, we split, but it's better to pick up one and, and, and move forward and go from there. So let's, start, let's talk about we opened um, playing Chapoa here and, and opening with just a few handful of games and having to do that and, and face up against a very good, a actually a very tall, long uh, team like Chapoa. Uh, we won 68-65. First half, they, they won at half 38-30. Second half, we come back and won 38-27 for a 68-65 victory. So, first, let's just talk about what does that, that opening win mean, Coach? It's really a great win because I really think Chipola, Tallahassee, you know, they might be the two best teams. Obviously, Northwest Florida is a super talented team, too. So, I, you, you just don't know at this stage of the game. Like you said, we're only playing a few games. We had played three games before we played them, and – Chipola already had six under the belt. So it's hard to really tell, but they had done a great job in those six. And Coach Tyndall's a great coach, and they're very well prepared. And he recruits those long athletic guys to fit into their zone and fit in their pressing uh, defense. Uh, so it, he, he recruits to his style very, very well. Um, but I think getting that game was important because, you know, we, you, like you said, we're down eight to half. We got down 14 points. And the Coastal Chaos was not, not in high gear that night. Uh, his uh, great defense uh, that they played slowed us down. And to be quite honest with you, uh, we just were have we couldn't do anything. We, we tried every zone press in the book, every man-to-man -man press in the book, trapping. Nothing worked. And uh, we actually went to a 2-3 zone. So we kind of looked like Chipotle a little bit out there <laughs> sitting in the zone. And they do it better than us. But for whatever reason, uh, our zone gave them fits. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know why, but it did. So we threw all the spaghetti on the wall. Uh, the zone stuck. It did great for us. I think there was like an eight-minute stretch. They didn't have a field goal, like from a little over 11 to three. And uh, it really got us the win. So uh, sometimes as a coach, you just have to make adjustments and kind of figure out what works and what doesn't work. And uh, what's worked for you in the past may not be what works for you tonight. And, and we talk about coastal chaos. We only turned them over 11 times. They only turned us over nine. So, But when you went in that 2-3 zone, um, it might have been possible they weren't expecting that, wasn't didn't prep for it, didn't play for it, because that's not traditionally the way the Commodores play defense. No, I guarantee they weren't <laughs> prepping for that. They probably, now, they do it in practice every day because they're a 2-3 zone team, but there's no way they thought we were going to play 2-3 zone because we hadn't played it this year and we don't have a history of playing it. We will play it when we have to. So, you know, you can count a uh, handful of times we'll do it. We may throw it in there a couple of possessions here and there, but it's not It's not our bread and butter. It's not what we live by. So, uh so I thought that was great, and then at the end of the game, you know, we had to execute, and uh, we were down, actually. Uh, there was a tie game, and we had to get the ball back with 20 seconds to go, and they, we came out of a timeout. We actually got rid of the zone, which we had just played for almost the whole second half, and we trapped and got their big kid to throw the ball in the stands, and uh, he, actually, I think he was throwing it at you and uh, Herman, <laughs> and then uh, we got it back and uh, called the set, and he says, hey, this is the play we want to run. Let's go. And they ran perfectly, got the guy shooting the ball exactly where we wanted him shooting the ball from. And, you know, we shot a little early, like to shoot at the four-second four mark so we can get the rebound and they can't get another basket. We shot a little early, but that's six, but that's okay because they had five seconds to get up the floor and 
we were able to hold them off. In that case, it was Mayo to Pierre-Louis in that right corner. That's right. During the three ball, and he's deadly from those corners. Jamie Pierre-Louis is tough in that corner, and uh, you're right. And so went to Mayo, to him, boom, game. And that, that's, that's exactly how we drew it up. So, and it makes a coach feel good when they draw it up that way and execute it that way on the floor. And they actually took out our high chaser, so we had to kind of use an adjustment. And uh, Kalen Marzette adjusted the way he was supposed to uh, uh, before he made a pass, and it was a very good adjustment. And uh, So, yeah, we're really happy that they executed. Because at the end of the game, it's usually when execution goes crazy. You don't, you don't go exactly the way you want it to. So when you draw it up and they go out and they execute, you feel really happy, and you feel happy for Jamie because he's got you know ice in his veins. He's one of those ice water guys. He can, he's a cold, stone cold, knock it down assassin when he's shooting the basketball, and he's not afraid to shoot the end of the games. As you saw last year, there's several games where he hit big shots for us. So you like to see that he's continued that. And he scored 21 for us that night. So yeah, he's a, tremendous. Tr- tr- nice, nice game for Pierre Louis. Let's move on now. We played Tallahassee. Um, the number two ranked team in the country, the number one ranked team in the state of Florida. Uh, so we want to preference that because they are very good. Um, and we came up short 86-74. They won both halves 40-29, 46-45. So we played much better that second half in adjusting against them, but, but we came up short. Um, all five of their starters are all in double figures, and Porndexter comes off the bench to hit 19 for them. Yeah, that's huge. They, he's uh, uh, Coach September has done a great job. He's doing a heck of a job coaching these guys up, uh, an unbelievable job recruiting guys. And, and when we talked over the summer, he goes, I'm going to recruit a team to be golf coached. I, I went one and three against you guys, and you know, it's not going to happen again. Uh, he goes, I'm going to go out and get players that – that are going to be quick, athletic, and really kind of a mirror image of ourselves, you know. And they do a great job on offense of spreading the floor and hitting shooters. And they, they did such a good job the other night that they, they really uh, locked us down on defense. Uh, defensively, I think it's the biggest difference. They're, they're tremendous. I mean, they're really, really good yeah. defensive team as well as being so quick and athletic. And, and they're still very skilled. Got shooters uh, across the board no matter where you go. You know, and then we I think we cut it to eight late in the game. You know, again, we got down big and came back right. and cut it. And then I, and we had a huge charge call, uh, you know, that, you know, we could have maybe cut it to six or five and just it just didn't go our way. And, and a lot of that was them forcing us with their really good defense. And then a lot of it us was we were just really sloppy, um, just very, very sloppy with the ball. And uh, we just said the previous game, we did a great job of executing this. This game, we did an extremely poor job of executing. And of course, that goes back on me. You know, we play the first few four games and everybody's playing a zone and uh, now you get a game where you're getting all man to man and usually we're excited because you know we're a pretty good man to man team and most teams will play a zone to slow us down and and, and make a shoot from the outside and uh, uh, they played man to man and they played up in your face man to man and we were not prepared and that's that's on me you got to do a better job of getting our guys ready to to play in that game so give coach September all the credit uh, they, they he, he out coached us and they outplayed us so so we get a chance we play them three more times, though. So, uh, and normally it would be we would play everybody in the conference three. This year we're going to play everybody four. Um, four crazy. Be, it's just crazy. <laughs> so, uh, Pierre Louis, uh, game high, twenty-two points again, back to back, twenty-plus point games. Yeah, he, he's playing great. And unfortunately, because their defense is so good, we had to do a lot of what we call flat, where we kind of put everybody along the baseline, let him go one on one, because their defense was so great, we couldn't. They shrink the gap so well. You're not going to split them on defense. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we had a real tough time with that. They, they, they did a great job defensively. So, And, and Jamie had a, another excellent game. Unfortunately, we just didn't have enough other guys have excellent games. Yeah, because Marzette was the only other pl- Commodore in double figures with yeah. 12. Which um, tells you when a team was scoring 100 points and they come in, we just um, played two great defensive teams. teams. So Now, with that said, because we always talk about it in a panel conference because of the way they come, you don't go crazy win or lose because in just a few days you're going to turn around and play again. So we're going to go over and play Northwest Florida. They're four and one overall, one and one in the panel conference. Um, wait a minute, I better no, they're not. I better get the right thing here. They're four and two overall, one and zero oh in the panel conference, ranked seventh in the state Correct. coaches poll. Correct. Uh, so and we're going to play them 
at the arena at Northwest Florida State College. That's kind of good for us because uh, I say that's good for us. We are 7-0 and in that mm -hmm. building last year, which uh, we're, it's, it's where the state championships held, so we'll let our guys know that. And we beat a couple other national ranked teams in there as well, previous, before, in their tournaments. And then we beat, you know, we won three in the state championship all national ranked teams. So I think we beat about five national ranked teams, teams in that building. We kind of like playing over there. <laughs> At least last year's team did. Uh, but it'll be crazy. They're one of the few teams in the Panhandle that are allowing fans. So we expect mm -hmm. it to be very loud. And uh, they're long, athletic. They got really good guard play. Yeah, it's a good basketball team that Coach Pierce put together. He does a great job getting those guys getting out there and you know they had their first he had his first panhandle win uh this year uh the other day for him so i think you know once you kind of you get it get it going sometimes it, it, it rolls downhill mm -hmm. so we got to be aware that uh they beat pensacola we got to be aware that they're going to be ready to play and they're out mm -hmm. for revenge and they don't want anybody win on their home court that's for sure so i've got four players in double figures several of those came back from last year and they're they were good last year so they're probably better this year they're definitely better. They got, I think it's my long lost cousin, Alonzo Gaffney, transferred from Ohio State. He's a four star recruit. He's a great player. Marseille Caston's back from last year. Jordan Smith, they were the two, two of the three best players last year. So they've done a great job of adding depth uh, to their team. So, and I think last year maybe that was a problem. They had five great starters, just not maybe as much depth as they would have liked. Man, they're, they're loaded. Great starters, great depth, shoot the heck out of the ball, great size, great athleticism. Definitely going to have our work caught out for us. But, but I, I, I can tell you, our guys from last year, the five we had back, they really liked playing over there last year. We, we put up some great games over there. So we'll just have to see how it goes. And, and then we play on Tuesday night, which is a little different. Uh, women will play at 530. Men will play at 730. And then on Thursday, we go to Pensacola State College and play the Pirates um, on their floor. They lost to Northwest, but it was single-digit loss. Yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, having a little bit of a tough year this year so far. Uh, maybe not as talented as coaches' teams have been in the past, but you know he's going to keep him in the game the whole way down, and that's what they did against Northwest. They battled, 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 but eventually Northwest got the best of them. They just lost to Polo the same way. You know, close game first half, and they battled to the end. Oh. So, And it'll be a great game. Northwest Florida's women's great. Coach Pete, uh, our women's coach, has got her first victory in the Panhandle. They played outstanding the other day. So it, it should be a good night of basketball to go over and see both those Northwest games. It should be a lot of fun, a lot of talent on the floor. And then uh, hopefully we can get into Pensacola and, and steal one on the road there as well. And we have Florida Coastal Prep Saturday. So we just played Saturday, then we're going Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So four games in eight days. Well, welcome to the new COVID schedule that we got. <laughs> so, well, um, one of those games – you put in that schedule, so but I, I did. But it is it is nice to have that game in there, and everybody has a different philosophy. You know, do you keep playing? Do you do this? Not having games for so long, just trying to get games and see where your holes are to repair them and try to get better going forward. So uh, it's going to be crazy. We got four road games coming up um, before we come back to the Billy Harrison Fieldhouse. So. And like you said, going to Northwest Florida State College, a great place to go watch that arena style gym. It's a great uh, place to watch a game. So if you're going to, if you're a Commodore fan, uh, you better get there early because I don't know how many they're letting in. I and, think it's 1,500. So. Okay. So, <laughs> so if they're letting 1,500 in, um, you, you might want to get there early uh, because Northwest Florida, their Raider club is, is very active and they will sit behind the benches, as we know, and it'll be loud. And so uh, looking forward to that game. So it's nice thing about me, when you don't coach anymore, you don't have to worry about what went right or went wrong. When you do what I do now, you just talk about the game and move <laughs> to the next one. So, that's right. So, that's right. So for Coach Phil Gaffney, I'm James Baxley. We'll be right back with Coach Kayla Petrie and talk about how the Lady Commodores did on the Commodore Sports Network. Programming on 90.7 WKGC and the Commodore Sports Network is sponsored by Sweet Bay. Sweet Bay is a bayfront village in Panama City that features parks, walking trails to the water, a future town center, and more. A community connected at the water's edge, Sweet Bay. More information about Sweet Bay online at sweetbayfl.com or 844-35-SWEET. Welcome back, Commodore fans. Uh, Coach Caleb Petrie and I will talk about Lady Commodore panel conference play last week. And then two big games coming up this week. Lady Commodore is right now 
three and one overall, one and one in the panel conference, ranked number three in the state coaches poll and last week's poll, eighth in the NJCA national poll. So, um, so as we we talk about that, we realized that Commodore fans will realize we split last week. We had Chipola come to town, and Chipola, a very, very, very good team, fast, quick. Um, if we look at the game by the quarters, uh, Chipola, 22 in the first, 12, 15, 13. Third quarter, Lady Commodores, 15, 12. Fourth quarter, 15, 13. So we end, come up short 62-55 in that panel conference uh, opener for both teams and a loss to a very good Chipola team. Um, definitely, I think they're not only one of the best teams in our conference, they're one of the best teams in the country. Nothing that we didn't know or nothing that we didn't expect. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, after seeing them and after kind of understand, I could talk about it, I could show them on film, their pressure, their athleticism, their speed, um, but I just couldn't replicate it in practice um, for our girls. And so we came out, we got punched in the mouth. And um, I think that we adjusted okay. And, um, you know, second half we, we played with them. And if we will just come out with a better start, um, and not make a couple of the mental errors just from experience that will be better. Uh, and, and one thing Chapole's always hung, uh, Coach Franklin hung his hat on is, is his defensive side of the ball. They will get in your grill. They're so fast, they're so quick. Turn the Lady Commodores over 18 times, we only turned them over seven. Right. Uh, so that was a big difference. And, and you talk about it's hard to simulate that kind of pressure because um, they can turn it on. Absolutely. Yeah, and they came in, and I knew when they came in, you could look at their in their eyes. They were all laser focused. They knew what it was. They let the game get away from them last year. It kept them out of the state tournament. None of us went to the national tournament, but their their hopes going on was done, and they knew exactly what was at hand. So when they hit that floor, they played. Now, also in that first quarter, they shot lights out. I mean, everything they threw up just went in. They were on fire. Absolutely. I I think they made four threes, maybe the first seven or eight possessions. Um, and we just, we, what did we get down? 15, 15 points, 17 so, points. 17 and, at one time. 17, and then, you know, at the quarter it was 12. You just can't do that against anyone in college basketball, especially a really good team like Chipola. So uh, so we, if we look at that, um, Almost all the Lady Commodores, nobody hit their averages for scoring. Um, Daniel had 19 for the night, I think was averaging 25, 26 going into that game. They, they did a nice job defending her and Gibbs with 10. And I believe that's the only two Lady Commodores in double figures. Right, that's kind of what we've been having. That's one thing that I'm wanting to, um, we're going to talk about that today. We got to get a little bit more balance. You know, it's not that we don't want Nia to score all the points. She's averaging about 26, which is unbelievable. But we need to get more people up close to that double-digit mark. If you'll see, we're, we've got um, quite a few that are right there around the seven or eight, and I would like to get five, six people in double figures right. if we can. And, and we're not far off from that, you know, two or three more points from each person. And I think that'll help us as a team. And so if we look at that game just a little bit, um, they shot 45% from the floor, 33% from behind the arc. Uh, the only thing they did poorly was shoot free throws, 42.1% from behind the free throw line. Lady Commodores were 38.5% from the floor, 22% from behind the arc, and 59.1% from the free throw line. Um, you know, so those kind of tells you that's one of those hard fault battles and what the defensive side pressure was doing to our shooters from a team that was normally averaging close to 100 points a game, uh, now down to 55. Right, absolutely. All the credit in the world to Chipola and how hard they play. Um, but definitely, um, I'm, I'm excited that we get to play them three more times because I think that we, we learned from it, we grew from it, and um, hopefully we won't make the same mistakes twice the next time around. So, now, and then, then Saturday we played Tallahassee Community College. That was their Panhandle Conference opener. You seem to, you've had Chipola, you've had Tallahassee, and I believe Northwest Florida will be their Panhandle Conference opener. So you seem to have all the teams open against Lady Commodores. That's kind of a side note, but if we look at Tallahassee, they hadn't played at that time. 
Uh, first quarter, 22-15, 23-15, uh, Lady Commodores. Um, Tallahassee come out and scored 23-16 to in the third quarter, and then Lady Commodores come out 28-18 to her 89-71 victory. So nice bounce back from that loss to Chipola. Well, what we had talked about was our start. We wanted to come out with a ton of energy. We wanted to, um, we changed a couple of things in our pregame routine, just trying to make sure that we had the the right amount of focus, the right amount of energy um, to come out. And, you know, we did that the, the first and second quarter and then, you know, kind of back to the same thing we were fighting against Chipola in the, in the third quarter. And so we're just, we're, we're striving to get that consistency and that, that full 40 minutes. And I think that that's what it's going to take um, to do something in this Panhandle Conference. And, and we're talking about a team now that's played four games. Because normally you played 15 to 18 games pre-conference. and But we're already in conference because of COVID. And, but everybody's in that boat when we get into this Panhandle Conference. So uh, if we look at quickly, um, Daniels with 33 that night, though, a big night for her. You know, I think Nia probably has a chance to maybe be the National Player of the Week. Um, she averaged on the week, I think she averaged 20, um, 27 and 11 um, and, you know, shot a great percentage from the field. And I believe she shot 50 percent from three. Um, she had a good week statistically. Um, so we'll see about that. She had a double-double. She actually had 12 boards in there, mm -hmm. too. So uh, uh, if you go Matthews with, with 13, a good night for Matthews. She, you know, Sarah, she is so athletic and so long. Um, she's kind of a, the sleeper on our team. She's, um, she can do some things, uh, but she kind of just blends in. And I don't mean that in a negative way at all. She's just so smooth. You know, she sneaks out in transition. She gets an offensive rebound. She gets fouled on a, on a putback. And so then you look up, and she's got, you know, 10 or 12 points. Right. So, and Jones with 10. So those were the double figures for the Lady Commodores. Well, I take that back. Yep. Yep. Those were the, were the three and doubles, but a nice bounce back against a, a very good team because um, the two sisters put up 40 points between them. Um, and that was not from a lack of scouting report. That was not from a lack of us giving them the attention. They are just yeah. solid, solid yeah. players. Um, they can score um, all three levels. Um, they're two very good players. But one stat that doesn't show up on that paper is Liz Gibbs. Uh, she, she took three charges that were called, and then she got – what I would say, I'm going to take up for her. I think she got robbed on it. I don't <laughs> usually say that, but for anybody to sacrifice their body four times like she did, that, that's huge. And um, that was her uh, recognizing um, from the scouting report. You know, we, we said that she's helping off on drivers, and she was able to be there in that gap and take those charges, and she did it. So um, that's tough to me. I respect that. So uh, did a nice job. Lady Commodores did a nice job over 6'3 Chambers, too. Long outreach hands. We had several guards to get in the paint and score over her, and you know, sis and some of them actually faced up, and shot over the top mm -hmm. of her outstretched hand. So they did a nice job. Of, yeah, coming into the game, I believe she was averaging about 15 and a yeah. half, and so um, we we just decided we knew we were going to play a little bit of small ball, yeah. um, and so we just we fronted her, and then we tried to go double team her, and I thought everybody a good team effort yeah. on her, like you say. And she only had two points for the game. So, yes, so a nice, nice effort by the Lady Commodores to uh, do that. If we we quickly look at panel conference standing, Chipola one and zero, Gulf Coast one and one, uh, Northwest Florida zero and zero. Like we talked about, we'll open against the Lady Doors Tuesday night. Um, Pensacola hasn't played because of COVID, COVID issues. COVID shutdown. Uh, uh, they'll be coming off of. They came off of. Um, quarantine yesterday. Okay, so they will play this mm -hmm. week. So, and then Tallahassee Owen won in the panel conference. So, now, we get ready to um, travel over Tuesday at 5.30 to the arena. It's a great place to watch a basketball game, a great place to have it. It's an arena-style gym. Uh, so, if you're a Commodore fan, get there early, because uh, Coach Gaffney said they're letting in about 1,500 and a large portion of that will be the Raiders Club because they have a huge Raiders Club there. The band will play and all that, and they let them in. So it's a loud place, a great place to watch a game. 4-0 overall. 
0-0 in the panel conference, ranked number one in the state coaches poll, ranked number two in the NJCA national poll. That's why we signed up to come, right? <laughs> um, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And so um, excited to go over there. Coach Walker, I have tremendous respect for him. We've been friends for a long time. Um, we talk about it all the time that uh, we're friends off the court, but for about 40 minutes or longer if necessary, um, we're going we're gonna to go after each other. Um, but he does a great job year in and year out. His teams are always uh, very disciplined. They play hard. Um, and this year, they're always athletic, but this year I think they may be the most athletic team in the country. They're not quite as big as Chipola, but as far as length and speed, um, they can really go. So that, that'll, that's going to be a challenge for us, but it'll be fun. Yeah, uh, Pinto averages 18.8 .8 points a game, returning player from last year, a really good yeah, she as a freshman, I thought, you know, even in Texas, I knew who she was. Um, she's one of the best players in the country. She'll move on to the highest level. Um, she's effective both sides of the ball. And so um, whoever lands that matchup will have their work cut yeah. out for them. And in the next case, um, Lady Commodores, for the most part, have played ball with no spectators. Well, having spectators in, in a gym going to have any effect at all? Um, I, I hope it has a positive effect yeah. um you know just we i think we've done a fairly good job of creating our own energy and you know being active mm -hmm. on the bench but um just that that noise and regardless of who they're yelling right. for hopefully we'll be able to channel that in a positive yeah. way and um come out ready to play so so in this case on tuesday play at the arena at northwest florida state college at 5:30. And then Thursday, we go to Pensacola State College and play them at 5.30 in their gym. So what do we expect? Here's a team that's trying to come off of COVID. Uh, we'll have one conference game under their belt by the time they see the Lady Commodores. Um, you know, I'm a one game at a time I focus. And, you know, with them not have not have played many games, no. I, I'll be honest with you, right now, I don't know a whole lot about no. them. I know that um, I know a couple of their players, but I know that um, that Penny does a great yeah. job. I know they'll be athletic. Um, I have heard that that gym is freezing. That's the one consistent from everybody, that they keep it like the Arctic over there. It's cold and not well lit. So, so it is, and it's a smaller, it's probably, it may very well be the smallest gym we play in. So. So whenever you put anybody in it, it gets loud in a hurry because of just the size of the gym. Well, are they allowing fans? Do you uh, know? I do not know the yeah. answer to that. They, so. That's the one team. I mean, and I'll know by um, by Thursday. I'll be. Yeah. We're working on getting stuff right now, but uh, right now I don't know a whole lot about them. Uh, one quick question. Yes, sir. Playing in a panel conference and playing in a conference you played in South Plains, which one's the toughest? Oh, that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> there, um, there. I've only, we've only played two games. Um, I would think um, both of them have positive, um, positive or negative, whatever mm -hmm. you look at. I'll, I'll say just the first glance. Um, maybe you could compare one to the Big Twelve, where it's size and strength and skill and kind of beating around on mm -hmm. each other, and then that would be the the whack jack, and then the. Uh, the panhandle seems to be uh, length and athleticism and speed. And so um, what's going to be the challenge absolutely is the um, that everybody okay. is a national contender in the panhandle. Uh, so in this case, that's Coach Kayla Petrie. I'm James Baxley. Thanks for watching, Commodore fans, and we'll see you next time on the Commodore Sports Network. This has been Coach's Corner. with your host, James Baxley.